All right, so let's do a little design on the fly section here. I want to build a small end table for between two. We got two nice new rocking chairs on the front porch of the sauna, and they need a smaller table than I have to go between them. I have some leftover pine. Their ends cut off the beams that I plan to use. Uh, so I'll build some nice sort of, I want a kind of beefy looking uh, table that looks suitable with the timber frame. So I got a two and a half inch leg here. I just drew a 2.5 by 2.5 rectangle. P to pull. Uh, I know the table needs to be 22 inches high. I want a fairly thick top, maybe an inch and a half top. So that'd be a 20.5 inch leg then. Just type 20.5 on the keyboard and hit enter. And now I want to turn this into a leg component. One, two, triple click, selects everything, right click and say make component. And this is my leg. And let's use the paint bucket B on the keyboard to find a nice color. What I'm actually going to do is paint this table barn red. So there you go, one barn red leg. Um, and I want the table to be the top of the table to be 12 inches by 18 inches. So leave an inch overhang on each edge. Um, and so that would be a footprint with the legs of 11 inches. So T for tape measure, I can draw some reference lines parallel to my main lines. So 11 inches by, no, I don't want 11. I want, if I got an inch overhang, I want 10 inches. So T for tape measure, sorry, T for tape measure. Why is that not doing that this time? Take a double click to put a reference line at the on the axis there, 10 inches. And then I said by 18 inches, so we'll go 16 inches in this direction. And M to move, hold the control key to make a copy. Put the leg there. Now that looks ridiculous, right? So I realize already that you learn from um, what you're building. Does it look sensible. So as much as I wanted it to look big and beefy, that looks silly. Um, well, let's let's still take it through and see how this works out. We, we're going to want to flip it. So flip along the red direction for this one. And then I'm going to take both of these legs and make a copy, move them to this axis. And then we're going to flip those along the green direction so that everything will be lined up when we start cutting mortises and tenons. Um, the top itself, like I said, we're going to go up here. Actually, an easy way to do this is just draw a rectangle on the top of the legs. And I said an inch and a half thick, pull it up 1.5 inches. And then I can just pull each edge out one inch and just double click with the pull operation to repeat the last operation. So there you go. I pulled every edge of that table out one inch. Now with the thick top on there, I hate it a little less. Um, eh. So anyway, this is one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three clicks, right click, make component. And this is our top and paint bucket. It's a burn red top. Um, and actually, let me hide that top for the moment. Because now I want to think about building the aprons for this thing. Um, beefy looking, let's do a half inch offset. So from that. And then maybe again, I'm going to do an inch and a half thick. Oops. Again, nice beefy table. 1.5. I want it, it's sitting outside on the patio. I want it to have some heft to it. Um, again, tape measure. I must that up. Tape measure. Uh, 0.5. And then again, in this direction, 1.5. And then I can draw a rectangle here. And then pull that down. Maybe, I don't know what, maybe 4.5 inches. See how I like the scale of that. If I put the, oh, here, let's write two, three clicks, make component. And this is our front. Uh, it's, it's our, just our apron. B for paint bucket. It's a red apron. Edit, unhide all. So there's my top. Four and a half inches thick. It does look beefy, that's for sure. Um, it's probably overkill. Uh, hide that. Maybe we'll push, pull, edit this. P, go up half an inch, we'll make it four inches thick. 
How's that look? Maybe a little better, right? And then we're going to make a copy of this. Again, M to make a copy. Hold the control key. You notice I picked the front edge of this leg because I want it reference from that leg to that leg. There you go. And then let's do the same thing here. Make the side apron. T for tape measure. Come back half an inch. And then 1.5 inches and draw a rectangle. P to push pull. Grab the reference of the other aprons. It's the same length. One, two, three clicks, make component. And this is our side apron bucket. There, red side apron. And again, I want to make a copy of that. M to make a copy. Hold the control key here to here. Ah, I didn't do that right. Hold the control key. Grab the M, grab the leg reference point to the other leg reference point. This is going to be one beefy little table. And edit. Unhide all. Oh, what do we think? Again, the idea is I wanted it to look like it belonged to a timber frame. I think the two and a half inch might be overkill. Maybe we'll go two inches here. So I can go take this leg and I'm going to push this back 0.5. And this edge here 0.5. And of course, now we got to fix our hide that. It did look like it kept the orientation pretty much right. So, and also I'm going to make my side aprons not quite as thick. So I'm going to take these and push that in a half an inch as well. So there'll be one inch thick material. And this one here, again, 0.5. All right. And now we got to lengthen all of those things that we made that are now too short because we made the legs thinner. P to push pull to there, O to orient, P to push pull again, double click to do the same thing. And now we'll do the side aprons. And they'll also be pulled out that same half inch on each end. And then we got to probably move some things around the orientation. So we'll take this and move it so it's in the right position. And similarly here, we're going to move this one a half an inch as well. Um, I don't have a reference line, but I can just type 0.5, enter, boom. All right, edit, delete guides, clean up all our construction lines. Edit, unhide, all. So there's our simple, yeah, I like the proportions of the two inch leg better. This is one of the things I really use SketchUp for, is to give me the sense of proportion. Now when I make this, I'll actually put a bit of a chamfer on the underside to soften the thickness of the top a little bit. But again, I, I do want it to look beefy. Uh, so now let's get into some of the joinery details. Um, easiest to do if I look at the end of these tenons. So we'll hide this. Um, I'll probably cut a three-eighths of an inch um, mortise and tenon joints, given the one-inch thickness of this material. So tape measure. Actually, let's edit this part. Teeth tape measure. Grab the center line there, and then I'm going to come 3 sixteenths, 3 slash 16 to one side, and then from that we go 3 eighths in the other direction. Um, come away maybe uh, 3 quarters of an inch from each edge of the and a half inch is probably enough. 0.5 inches, and same thing here, 0.5 inches, and I can draw a rectangle. In here, here, pull this out. Let's put a uh, what happens if I give a one inch tenon on each end? Um, I'll have to chamfer the corners, uh, so okay, that's good. Let's take this control C, oops, let's hide this leg, go around the other side, and go control D, and we'll paste this on here. Uh, I should put my reference lines in first. Hide. So T for tape measure. Center line. Actually, then I should be able to paste this on here and just glue it holding the center point, put it on the line. And then T for tape measure, come up 0.5. And then we'll just move it so that on that line that should be good so let's check our dimensions now 
So T for tape measure between here and here should be 5 16 and here and here is 5 16 so there we go, that's good. Uh, except that I forgot to be in edit mode when I did that. So now that I'm in edit mode this part, I'll just draw this rectangle in the same place since I got the reference thing that's sitting there. And then I can just delete the one that I created, errant. Double click to edit this part, P to push pull, again, one inch out. And notice actually, if you hide this leg, that because these are copies, I also have tenons on the other parts as well. So now let's do this one. Same thing here, tape measure, center line, down half an inch, and then three sixteenths of an inch, three eighths of an inch, half an inch from the bottom. And then I can draw my rectangle for my tenon, pull it out one inch. Yeah, and you see we've got these parts colliding, but that's easy. Well, what I'll do when I, when I, um, oh, let's do it. Let's draw a line here. I can go between here and here. I will just chamfer these tenons so that they have space. P push pull when I make the part. So I'll do the same thing for this tenon. Line between here and here. P to push pull, double click, repeat the last. So you will so we'll have the tenons. So we'll, chamfered on the edge so that they run into each other. I might even go with one and a quarter inch tenons and they could go, nah, that's it's, I like it this way. We'll do it like that. One inch tenons, lots on these little legs. Um, so similarly on this, oh, and this one I want to go flip along. I think it's the red direction. There you go. Take this one line here, here, Peter push pull. Now we're going to fix the chamfer on that end. Uh, I probably need to flip this one along the green direction. Uh, da, 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 da. Where am I? Flip along, green direction. And we'll draw a tenon on the end of this one. Again, we've got our reference lines, half an inch down, to the center line, 3 16 Three-eighths, half an inch, rectangle, this corner and this corner, P to push-pull, I can actually use this point, and then L to chamfer the corner, push-pull, oop, wrong way, Go down there. All right, so there's all our tenons cut, so edit. I don't want to delete the guides yet. I'm going to edit, unhide all, and hide the top. I'm going to hide this apron. And do I have the reference line there? No, I don't. So let's don't hide the apron. Let's we'll use the back edges. See, I've got the edit, delete guides. I've got back edges displayed, which is the K key on the keyboard turns on and off the display of back edges. So if I edit this part. And sometimes the orientation matters, whether you can see those back edges or not. Now I can see them a little better. I can draw a rectangle between this corner and this corner. And then now I can go P to push pull. I'm going to go in. I'm going to go 1.25 depth. And you'll see that's a little deeper than... Actually, I don't need to go 1.25. I just go 1. Right, let me undo that. Control Z, P to push pull. Let me just do the one inch depth. There, one inch. All right, so if I hide that, you can see I've got uh, mortise in the leg here. And I want to do the same on this side. And again, find an orientation where I can see those back edges fairly well. This works. Rectangle between this corner. Oop, I missed. Control Z, this corner. This corner, and then P to push pull, double click should do a one inch push just like last time. And let's see if we got it. And we'll hide this. And we've got our two mortises that run into each other. Looks like they made kind of a mess on the inside. I can probably just edit this, delete that edge. 
and that and that edge and that cleans up the stuff on the inside I don't need these lines either erase that line and that line and what we really have is two holes that run into each other into each other like this similarly in here E to erase and even went though there's your back edges the erase option I can erase them all right so that's what we're left with is two uh whoops I goofed I deleted a line I shouldn't have deleted so we'll draw this line between here and here and it should fill in those faces normally but it didn't so we'll why are we not filling my face? I must have deleted one of these lines. It would be really difficult. Fill in my faces. Rectangle. Between here and there. That did it. Oh, it's because I'm not an editable anymore. moron. Uh, edit this part. Now if I draw a line between here and here. There we go. Now it looks right. And we've got our mortise pockets all fixed up now. And again, because we copied and flipped... The other legs, we got the mortise pockets in all the other legs as well. Edit. What happened there? Full screen. Edit. Unhide all. There you go. There's my simple little tip. Turn off the back edges now to clean it up. There's my simple little beefy timber frame table for the front of my sauna. Uh, next, I want to get my cutlass dimensions. So there's an extension I use called Cutlist. Um, if you want to find that, you can just go to the extension warehouse, search for the extension called Cutlist and install it. Extensions Cutlist. Uh, I want to dump out a CSV file of all of my components. And I run this. It says nothing selected. You want to select all visible? Yes, I do. Oh, I have to save it first. Ha ha ha. File. Save as. Uh, I want to save it to my SketchUp folder where I save all my SketchUp designs. And this is my sauna, sauna, front porch table. Now I will run my extension cut list, export a CSV file, run that. Go into my Google Drive. I have a cut list folder in my Google Drive. So that will move that on the other screen for now. Let's find that file. So open file location, right? So here's the cutlist CSV file that was written out. And what I'm going to do is simply drag that file into Google Drive. And I, I just like uh, the Google Sheets app as a really easy way to work with these things. And I'm just going to um, clean this up. Oh, I got the wrong file. Cutlist, this one. So here's what the Cutlist extension put out, and I find I'm going to clean it up a little bit. I don't need this column. I don't need any of these columns. And I prefer the quantity over here. And you don't need that. So this is my uh, porch table. And that's my title, so we'll go a little bit bigger. And I like my headings bold. All right, so there you go. That's it. That's my little cutlass. So I can print this out and take it down to the shop. And then I've got my list of parts I need for this project. That sort of completes my whole design process. If you'd like to see the process of constructing the table that I just designed, click the link shown on the screen here. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.